Hey everyone, my name is Michael Seiger and I'm the publisher of DomainSherpa.com, the domain name authority. Today I'm excited to have a true domain name pioneer on the program. Joining me today is Mark Ostrovsky. Mark is an entrepreneur, speaker, and venture capitalist. He founded, built, and sold over $100 million of businesses, starting with only a $5,000 car loan. He's well known for his record sale of the domain name business.com in 1999 for seven and a half million dollars which landed him in the Guinness Book of World Records as the most expensive domain name ever sold. Business.com was sold again in 2007 for 345 million earning Mark another two and a half plus million dollars. But Mark's list of achievements only starts there. He was an early pioneer and founder in the voicemail market. He founded the prepaid and prepaid phone card industry, founded five magazines, founded 12 trade shows, and founded seven companies. He currently owns or owns stakes in over 150 websites, including blinds.com, cufflinks.com, etickets.com, and summercamps.com. He also has a premium domain name portfolio, including bachelor.com, mutualfund.com, photographer.com, and consultants.com. Mark has appeared in hundreds of media outlets, including the Today Show, ABC's 2020, The Wall Street Journal, The New York Times, and USA Today. He's also the author of... Get Rich Click, The Ultimate Guide to Making Money on the Internet, which includes 17 chapters and 272 pages of ideas, tips, strategies, and actionable tactics for making money on the Internet. And as you can see, I've got quite a few identified in my own personal copy. Welcome, Mark. It's my honor to have you on the show. Thank you very much. It's lovely to be here. Mark, you have a who's who of endorsements on this book. Right on the front cover... I see Steve Wozniak, the Woz, co-founder of Apple Computer. He says, everyone can make money online. My friend Mark teaches you how in this book. Dr. Stephen Covey, you know, one of my all-time favorites, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, says, quote, this easy-to-follow book will teach you the ropes to achieve financial success. Stephen Covey said that. You've got other endorsements all over this place. You've got my favorite guerrilla marketing guy, Jay Levinson, inside. You've got... Um, Jack Canfield, author of Chicken Soup for the Soul. Fantastic endorsements. How, what makes this book so unique? Probably the first thing is I do it. Most people write the books that haven't done it. And so I, did, I didn't want to come out first. I wanted to come out best. And so I took five years to write the book. Five years I've been working on this thing. Uh, and a lot of that was because the market changes so fast, you got to update. But... Uh, those people know me, have met me over the years, know what I've been working on, and I sent them drafts before I got it done. And if you look at the book, just as you have done, you're in the business and you're saying, wow, this is a helpful book. And the reason it is, is we took very meticulous action to give details and not a bunch of junk. So pick a, pick a page the 32 ways to pay for a product. You know, most people know pay-per-click or pay-per-sale. We found 32 ways that you can buy and pay for an item online. So it's an attention to detail and, and it's more of a way of giving back to the industry because you don't make money in the book business. You know, it's just not a, a profitable venture. Right. So... It is what it is. It is. All right, let's start off with um, one of the first ideas in your book. You say there are only a certain number of ways to get rich in life. Tell us what they are. Oh, man, you're going to make me refer back to my writing. <laughs> um, we put uh, inherit it, which is obvious, marry it, and I went through that in my first divorce. She did really well. Uh, it Invest. You can invest money. To get rich that's obvious you can get lucky you can win the lottery or or some other luck lucky event uh, number five is you can work for a company uh, and and that's the hardest way with respect to the day-to-day -day person but it depends on who you work for and what you get paid do you get paid options or any other way of getting compensated uh, you can break the law uh, you can steal the money you can uh, be a, a drug dealer or you can con people Unfortunately, there's lots of those, but that's not an honest way to get wealthy. Uh, and the way that I chose and the way that I profess is entrepreneurship. And entrepreneurship is um, brain power. And it's understanding a market, understanding a niche, understanding 
the, the, the players you're playing with and against. And uh, I literally spend more time when I'm competing learning about my competitors than I do my own product. Hmm. And so we say there are only seven ways, and I defy anybody to come up with another way that you can make money and, and get wealthy other than in that list of seven. Great. In your book, you discuss a lot of topics like website optimization, reverse commerce, advertising, affiliate marketing. Do all the topics center around domain names? In other words, no, 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 not at all. Not at all. You no, don't no, no, need to chat. own a domain name in order to play in any of these spaces or, or uh, follow the, the ideas in the book. Well, let, let's compare. One of the chapters is about comparing a domain name to real estate. And let's start there, if I may, because the domain name uh, uh, we, we trademarked or, 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 or quoted as the, the people who created the statement, domain names or internet real estate. Mm -hmm. And that was back in 94 when I, when I acquired business.com. And we said that in our press release. Uh, and I firmly believe that's the basis of the building, the domain name. Then you can build whatever you want on top, a house, a skyscraper, a storage unit, whatever it may be. So the book has, is not about domain names. It's about how to get rich using the internet as the medium. There, domain names are an integral part of it, but they're passe in many ways to other people. They're like, yeah, I'll get a domain, that's no big deal. But once I own the domain, the real action is how to make money from it. So right. It's not a domain book at all. It's just got one chapter on domains. Right. But it's all integrated. Like you can use domains with all of the ideas of the book. Let's put it this way. You can't do anything without the domain or a domain. You can still get rich using Facebook without a domain name, though. I've got in there ways to make money with Facebook and YouTube and, and other social media sites without a domain. But having a domain and using the domain is, is, is integral to the real estate business. You can make money in real estate buying and flipping and never taking possession or being a middleman. But that's not the essence of the real estate business, but you can say you're in the real estate business. So I get past that and say domain names are simply the, the dirt at the bottom of the building. But you can buy and sell that dirt and make a whole life's living in the domain space. And I've been doing that for a long time. Great. Okay. So I'm going to dig into to your book, but first I want to take a step back for a moment, ask you a few questions about business.com, the, the transaction. Most domain invest investors would kill to have a domain name like business.com, and they can only dream of a sale of the magnitude. Was business.com the highest you've ever paid for a domain name? Yeah, I think so. Uh, I bought consulting and bachelor in a in a group of names but i think the individual was 150,000 i paid the i i paid that for another name but in relatively it's about the most i've ever personally paid for a name okay and was was it the highest transaction you've ever sold it for no really you've sold a domain name for higher than seven and a half or 10 cumulative i got 10, I got 10 million the same day for another domain wow are you at liberty to say a, what that domain was? Well, it was under non-disclosure at the time. I don't know today if that's still uh, applicable or it makes a difference, but I sold business.com the same very day I sold ebusiness.com to their competitor. Wow. What was it like to negotiate a deal or deals of that magnitude? It, you know what? It was 30 days after I'd sold my company for $35 million. I was on a high at the time. It didn't make a difference, but it was just like the best 35 days of my life. <laughs> I had sold the first company for 35 million cash, and three, we're on a trip celebrating that event. We're in Mexico with my lawyer and his wife and some other friends, and they start negotiating on business.com. We say to one, they offered a million. We'll all offer two. We'll all offer three. We'll all offer four. And we got one up to seven and a half million and one to 10. And we sold them the same day. Unbelievable. And so on your, when you had your media company and you sold that for 35 million, you didn't do the, the, um, the negotiations on that. You had a broker, right? That's correct. I, it's not a broker. I had an investment banker. Okay. The key is knowing what you don't know. It's right. a big right. philosophy in my world in everything I do. 
and I hire the best lawyers, the best accountants, the best of, of the people I deal with because they know and have made the mistakes and they usually have years of experience. I thought we'd get eight million for the company. They had five bids, eight, 12, 20, 27, 28, and 35. Hmm. All for the same company, the same EBITDA, and the same EBITDA. So we sold for thirty-five million, and I got that in cash up front. Wow! And then this deal came within thirty days of that. While we're celebrating the first one, we negotiated the sale of the second one. And did you actually? So the domain names business uh, was different. It, you know, it was basically a, a domain name, an asset. Did you? use a an investment broker or or some sort of broker to to do that deal as well no you did it yourself yeah and actually i called well no one had ever done that no one right. had ever bought a domain name for that kind of money i had an agreement to buy it from the 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 gentleman in in london for seventy five thousand, and i went to my father who's a business professor and said do you think i should do this and his comment was do you have the money i said yeah he said do you need that money for another investment? I said, no, it's in the bank earning interest. He said, how much interest does it earn? I said, 2%. He said, can you make more than 2% with the other asset? I said, yeah, I think so. So I went back to buy it and the guy bumped the price from 75 to 150 on the day of the night before the sale. And so when I sold it for seven and a half million, he was the first person I let know. <laughs> So you didn't actually even own the domain name. You sold it before you bought it. No, 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 no. I bought it in 94. Oh, okay. And when I bought it, the guy screwed me the Got night you. before I bought it. The night and before. I held it planning to build a magazine called business.com. Because right. I saw the bit internet as a business medium, whereas it was mostly being used for sex and for information, but not for business. And I saw the internet as a business commerce site. And in fact... I'll tell you something that I've not told another journalist. If you go to the USPTO, Patent and Trademark Office, and type in .com, you will see that I filed a trademark on .com. And I saw that. The Trademark Office couldn't understand what it was. They couldn't <laughs> grant it because they didn't know what I was talking about. But I do have it on filing back way back when. Yeah, I actually went to the USPTO yesterday as I was preparing for this interview, and I typed in your name, and I saw that you've read you you registered business.com, you tried to register a bunch of other things, and I saw that you read you tried you put in a, uh, a trademark registration for .com as a as a uh, business magazine. I was yeah, going to really, ask you about that. Well, I really wanted it just so I could get a dollar a year from every domain owner. <laughs> <laughs> that was the real goal. It didn't work, but I tried. And I figured if you don't try, you got no chance. Love it. So when you're selling business.com and ebusiness.com, how do you even know to where to start a negotiation? It, it's a, it's a, a magnitude that nobody's ever been at before. Um, do you start at $10 million and negotiate down to $7.5 do you? No, you no, just... no. Not at all. Um, we had an offer of a million, and I called his competitor who I knew and said he wants to buy it for a million. The guy said, I'll buy two. They were flush with cash. Mm. This is in the day when they raised hundreds of millions on ideas. And as they used to say, you could stick your finger in the ground in Silicon Valley and up pull your finger was a $100 bill attached. Right. They had that kind of money. So I, two, and then it got to three, and then it got to four. And I, I did the same thing the investment bankers do. I kept going back and forth until I had it. And they were both at the pressure point. And they both said, that's it. And one of them luckily said, okay, I'll tell you what, I'll pay you 10 million, but I want e-business. I said, okay, I'll do that. And so the surprise was the other one was under non-disclosure and we didn't disclose it. And that was what we ended up with. Amazing. And so the money transfers into your bank account via wire. You closed both transactions. No, that's not the way it went down. And it 